Okie doke, so from fiscal recklessness, let's talk about what can I call this? Um, not recklessness when it comes to fuel, but <laughs> galloping uh, prices. Mm. And welcome, Bernice Abubeidu Lanza. Good morning. Good morning to you. And this good morning, morning you've been, you you've been uh, missing in action. Missing in action, mm. MIA. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad to be here, but you know I was in the back room giving, yeah, 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 yeah. You, giving you all the moral support, yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. we're going to be talking about fuel this morning. And we've been told once again to expect <laughs> hike in the fuel prices. It doesn't, it doesn't get easy, easier by the day, as we <coughs> would expect. But that's what it is. Um, so... This morning, uh, our, t our colleagues on the AM Business team... Please don't forget, award-winning Charles IET. Yes, please. Award-winning Charles IET has put... top-notch in the country. Has put together something on the fuel price hikes, and uh, he's been speaking to industry, industry players. Let's watch it. Petrol, diesel, gasoline, just like anywhere else, is a fuel to Ghana's economy. Whatever happens to this commodity gets producers, government, and consumers jittering. The fuel there is no good at all. Because the fuel now, if it, the first time, if you take the 20 Ghana fuel and do some work, some one, two, one, two, now, if you just take 50 Ghana. We are dying, serious, we are dying. Are dying. Now, if you wait for all the money you get, you buy fuel. All the money you get, you buy fuel. Global energy prices have risen dramatically as a result of the war in Ukraine and the World Bank says consumers shouldn't expect relief anytime soon. The more this trajectory persists for a elongated period of time, the more the high inflation... Petroleum expert Dr. Yusuf Sulemana says this development signals an emerging global economic recession, with Ghana not being an exception. It's going to lead to a, it's a potential recession or stagnation in economic growth. And that is what we, we analysts are very much afraid of. And so global energy community or the global, the global space, they have, to take this, they have to take it serious and put all arsenals, economic arsenals that are involved. And another thing that is of course worrying, especially when, when, we, when, when we are experiencing recession tendencies, is the continued tweaking of policy rates with minimal impact on you know, the economic dynamics of the day. So when policy rates keeps changing, or what we call quantitative easing sets into the economy, we keep playing with the I mean the interest rates with minimal effect. It means that it's a cost, it's, it's, a, it's a very serious cost worry. And so if the economy, I mean if the rate at which the economy is growing or performing, grow numbed with respect to this policy rates adjustment or what you call um, um, quantitative easing that is done everywhere, then that's a cost to worry. And that these are all precaution, a precursor to economic recession. Despite a recent drop in the price of oil from the highs of over $139 per barrel in early March, global energy prices are expected to rise an incredible 50.5% this year. That's according to the World Bank's April Commodity Market Outlook, which was released on Tuesday. This is the biggest jump since 1973. But here in Ghana, cushioning the consumer from the impact of these price hikes seems impossible. Government has refused two options, removing petrol taxes on imp or imposing some windfall tax on international oil companies, saying the impact on revenue will be dire. We've seen uh, a monumental jump in the prices of oil and of course also affecting the price of the various finished products. Fritz Moses is a senior researcher at the Institute of Energy Securities, a leading petrol think tank in Ghana. He critiques government positioning on stabilizing petrol prices for consumers. What we project or what we say is that whereas government sees revenue um, loss in reducing or removing taxes on the price product, we think it's also being able to recoup more through rainfall, uh, rainfall that has been able to make um, over the past few months. Because of course the projection for prices of fuel, for oil was around $64. It's currently hovering over $220. And so of course government is making more revenue than they had anticipated. Now even aside that, we think that there's some um, uh, examples that governments of Ghana can look at. Now in, in, in Hungary, as of last week, there was the passage of the rainfall tax on um, oil producers 
in the UK two days ago they also did the same to put taxes on the producing um, oil producing countries um, companies that are breaking in excess revenue because of this um, um, instability in the market and so we think that of course the argument that these producers made was that it will make uh, prices of energy in those countries higher but fortunately for Ghana we don't rely majority, uh, majorly on the products from these oil producing um, companies and so we can look at government can um, start the conversations around how it can also impose something like a windfall taxes on, on these um, IOCs operating in Ghana because at the end of the day, even if we are increasing um, taxes on them, it wouldn't affect us so much, our energy makes so much because mo almost everything that we are using, all the fuels we are using in Ghana is being imported into the country. Crippling Western sanctions against Russia have disrupted the global trade of commodities, leading to huge energy price increases, and food prices are projected to rise 22.9% this year, as well, the most since 2008, as wheat prices jump 40% to record highs. These factors are unbearable for Ghanaian consumers paying extra at the pumps. A salary of 1,600 cities, 500 cities. Taking a car from Kasua to Seke will be 10 cities per transportation. In and out is 20. And at the end of the month, he's taking 1,000 cities. He is the loser. Uh, initially, you'd have to work for a few hours, but now you have to put in more effort. That is, you work extra hard. So uh, it's still affecting the sales in the way. We are dying. See you. We are dying. Now, if you wait, all the money you get, you buy for it. All the money you get, you buy for it. We can't do this. See you. We are dying. Every two weeks, increment. Every two weeks, increment. Oh! In June, price of petrol is suspected to witness some significant increase between 5 to 9 percent. Duncan Amwa heads the Chamber of Petrol Consumers Ghana, COPEC. There's a lot of pressure now locally on gasoline, uh, which means that your petrol could go up uh, by some 8.6 percent. Uh, however, diesel, which had gone up drastically, if you recall, the pumps are uh, currently recording 11.75, 11.9 uh, would rather decline. So you would see a mix, whilst LPG would also decline by some 1.6% uh, in money terms, you are looking at about 17 pesos per kilogram. What that means is that it's a mixed bag. Petrol will go up, diesel would come down from the almost 12 Ghana city that it is, whilst petrol could climb to about um, um, above 10. Aside from global influences on petrol prices, the continuous depreciation of the city remains a major concern to oil marketing companies who are often slapped with inflationary pressures any time they import the liquid gold. In order to avert this challenge, energy experts are calling for a major structural reform, including a revamping of the Tema oil refinery as well as a bulk oil storage and transport company bust. If crude should move to 120, it means that it will get worse. So any reasonable person will say, let's plan for a more difficult time ahead. And planning means that you would stock up at current level so that even when you wake up and things have escalated, there will be a fallback you know, inventory that you could actually use to stabilize your market. If we were to, to, to be able to link up the upstream and downstream together seamlessly, as we always mention, so that potential windfalls at the upstream where when oil prices are going up will have a way of cascading into the downstream to pull down the pumps. Then that can be in a way is to support you know, our economic survival. The government can um, start the conversations around how it can also impose something like a windfall taxes on, on these um, IOCs operating in Ghana. Because at the end of the day, even if we are increasing um, taxes on them, it wouldn't affect us so much. Our energy makes so much because Almost everything that we are using, all the fuels we are using in Ghana, is being imported into the country. And so we don't see how that would necessarily affect us. Of course, one may say that um, maybe for electricity prices, because we are, we are buying or we would be buying gas from these IOCs. 
Meanwhile, government is contemplating firming up deregulation policies and some price regulations to ease up the pressure on consumers for the time being. In the meantime, consumers are expected to pay more as experts are also predicting a $140 per barrel mark by the end of this year. This will mean so much so that the cost of living could escalate in the weeks to come. I'm Charles Aite for Joy Business.